you don't dare take your eyes off Sidney Crosby when he's on the ice. Because if you do, you might miss something like this. Paul Marner's 12-year-old, Mitch, is the captain, number 87. Marner isn't just any hockey dad. He's the father of one of the best players around. Um, Connor David, I go to uh, Premier League. Every so often, collegiate. we hear rumors of a special talent. A talent who is light years ahead of their competition. And a talent who may just be the next generational star in the NHL. Now, coincide this with the rapid growth of social media, these players more than ever now have the chance to be discovered. As we have been seeing a wave of exceptional talent erupting from non-traditional hockey markets. The next Sidney Crosby, the next Patrick Kane, Lemieux, Bobby Orr, common in extremely high praise that may just prove to be foolish. These players from a very young age were identified to be special. And over the course of the last few decades, we've seen some of these players develop into superstars at the NHL level. And as for the others, even though they were just as dominant at a young age, they wouldn't even come close to sniffing the NHL. Picture this. It's 6 a.m. on a harsh winter day in the middle of January. You and your dad got up extra early to get Timmy's on the way to the rink. It's a tournament weekend and you are extremely excited to play. Except, you were 9 years old and you had to travel to another country to compete in one of the best tournaments in the world. The Brick Invitational Tournament. A prestigious tournament held in the West Edmonton Mall. It is composed of 14 teams spanning across North America and is for players aged 10 and under. And throughout the years, we've seen many NHL players compete in the Brick Invitational. P.K. Subban, Austin Matthews. To Matthews. Matthews circles in front, shoots, scores! Austin Matthews. Tyler Sagan. Every tournament seemingly possesses multiple NHL stars. And in 2010, we would see the most dominant performance in tournament history, as we would see a nine-year-old Cole Caulfield put on a clinic, as he put up 18 points, nine goals, and only six games. And this tournament would really put Caulfield on the radar. He was undersized, but he had an exceptional goal scorer's touch. And so from the age of nine, scouts were now viewing Caulfield as a potential phenom. And I believe Caulfield will get the goal, his fourth point of the game. So flash forward to the rest of Caulfield's minor career. He's routinely scoring over a goal per game in every league he plays in. He would go on to join the USDP, where he would continue to reinforce the narrative that he is an elite natural goal scorer. In U17, he had 44 goals in 40 games. In U18, he had an unbelievable 72 goals in 64 games. And all this is great, Except, he's always had one major issue. Caulfield has always been very undersized. So standing in at 5'7", Caulfield, who had the stats of a generational goal scorer, fell to number 15 in the 2019 NHL Draft. And today, Caulfield is currently playing in the NCAA for the University of Wisconsin, where his goal scoring ability has continued to grow. Some players can just score. It's indescribable. And Caulfield was one of those players who was identified from a very young age. And even though he is still very undersized, he may just prove every team wrong for passing on him. Next, we have the Mac Dog, Nathan McKinnon. And also, if you guys haven't already, make sure to press subscribe and leave a like on the video. You guys have been showing so much support recently, and doing so would really make my day. Growing up in Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, also home to who else but Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon from a very young age was dominant. And this may sound like a bit of hyperbole, but I consider McKinnon to be one of the most explosive players in NHL history. And what put him head and shoulders above the competition from a very young age was his skating. And so the fact that he was from Cole Harbor, the same hometown as Sidney Crosby, the spotlight was forced on McKinnon from a very young age as Cole Harbour now had another potential superstar. And what's interesting about McKinnon's story is yes, he was a very dominant player, but he wasn't even close to the generational talent Crosby was displaying at the same age. However, McKinnon had the drive in him. In fact, he worshipped Crosby growing up, and he was going to do anything it took 
to follow in his steps. And this inner drive would lead him to following the exact same route. As McKinnon would opt to leave Nova Scotia and play for Shattuck St. Mary's, where his game would see rapid progression. He would then get drafted first overall in the KMJHL draft, where he would also dominate. And this dominance would lead him to getting drafted first overall in the NHL draft, where today, McKinnon is hands down a top three player in the entire NHL. And it is crazy to think that because he grew up in Cole Harbor, the hometown of Sidney Crosby, the spotlight would be forced on McKinnon from a very young age. And instead of caving in that pressure, McKinnon would embrace it and has turned into one of the most exciting talents in the game. Next, we have Aito Iguchi. And if you've watched Pavel Barber, you've probably seen Iguchi before because he is an extraordinary talent. And at the age of nine, Iguchi would become a viral sensation as his highlight packages and point production would point towards the next Sidney Crosby. I mean, just nasty. He is an elite skater, he has unbelievable hands, vision, and a scorer's touch. And he was, and still is, an offensive force. But, it is also very important to note, Aito is from Japan. The last Japanese player to play in the NHL was Yukata Fukafuji, a goalie who played four games for the LA Kings in 2006. So being that he was from Japan, many questions were raised. Yes, he does look unbelievable, but that all gets put into question when you look at the competition. Now, Japanese hockey programs have been growing, but compared to the hundreds of millions of dollars spent each season in Canadian markets, the comparison between countries is just unjust. So, where's Iguchi now? Well, after proving he could match up against foreign competition during the Division II World Championships, as a double underager, Aito would find himself in a USHL camp, finally playing against Canadians and Americans his age. And he played really well, which would lead him to being drafted and signed by the Quebec Ramparts. Now, with the complications of international travel and border restrictions, Aito has still yet to come to Canada. But standing in at approximately 5'4 at age 17, Aito, who looks like the most skilled 9-year-old I've ever seen, will have a long uphill battle to get to the NHL. Next, actually wait, have you guys seen this clip? Well, that is a nine-year-old Oliver Wallstrom, the same Wallstrom that got selected 11th overall in the 2018 NHL draft. And after this insane shootout goal, at the age of nine, Wallstrom became a viral sensation as this clip would not only receive hundreds of millions of views, but Walsham would also appear on national talk shows. I had to sign um, my first autograph and I can't do cursive yet, so I, I had to do print. And was receiving praise as the next phenom among his age class. And I know I've said his age three times now, but that is a lot of pressure for someone who's nine years old. Nine. Fortunately though, Walsham would handle his young fame extremely well as he would dominate the rest of his minor career, and he'd end up in Shattuck just like Nathan McKinnon. And in 2016, Wallstrom would commit to the USDP, where he alongside Quinn Hughes, Brady Kachuk, and Josh Norris, would continue to dominate at every level. And believe it or not, I also wanted to include this in the worst draft day comparison video, but Wallstrom was also being compared to Alex Ovechkin. Insane pressure to deal with from such a young age. But, Walsham would prevail, as he'd be drafted 11th overall by the Islanders in 2018, and has played 9 games so far in the NHL. And now, Walsham has had some struggles the last couple years, but for someone who is said to be the next phenom at such a young age, the prediction still may be correct, as Walsham is a big goal-scoring winger who may just become that elite talent. Next, we have Tyler Benson, and Benson's rise to fame was due to him having one of the best minor hockey league seasons in Western Canadian history. And this story is a bit closer to home. Being that Benson was also born in 1998, I didn't face him myself, but I had friends who did. And what he pulled off in the 2012-2013 season was just ungodly, as Benson would go on to put up 146 points. You heard that correctly, 146 points? in only 33 games. 
an absolutely absurd point total that broke Canadian records. And this season would lead him to being drafted first overall in the 2013 WHL Draft. Could you imagine playing every single game in a season and averaging nearly 5 points per game? You would feel like a god playing against a bunch of peasants. And of course, after this monumental season, Benson looked like he was building up to be the next great player in the NHL. But it wasn't that simple. Benson would go on to have a pretty good rookie season with 45 points, and then he would hit a brick wall, as Benson needed to get spinal surgery to remove a cyst. And this would cause him to miss the majority of his draft year and delay his development. And so throughout Benson's draft year, he would go from a potential top 5 pick, to top 10, to mid first rounder, to falling outside the first round. Where the Edmonton Oilers would draft Benson with pick number 32. The potential steal of the draft, especially because he was considered a prodigy not even 2 years prior. And now that we are 4 years removed from the 2016 NHL draft, Benson has been developing really well. As he has been an elite player in the AHL and is currently a point per game in the Swiss League. So hopefully the injury curse does not keep affecting Benson's career because he still has the tool set to be a special talent. The development curve of a hockey player is chaotic. Some players have dominated just as much as a Crosby or McDavid but don't come close to seeing the NHL. But with the new wave of social media scouting, I hope we see more exceptional talent being found. Because players like Aito Iguchi under Canadian development programs could end up being the next star. And so with players like Connor Bedard and Shane Wright coming up in the system, hockey prodigies will continue to pop up. And we as fans get to sit back and watch them develop into stars. But anyways guys, can you name another child prodigy? Comment down below, I'd love to know. And make sure to press subscribe for some more awesome hockey content, your support has just been insane recently. So let's keep the grind going, I hope all you guys are doing well, see you guys later.